yeah, I felt a, fair, a fairly similar way with the control panel. I, you know, grew up using Windows. I've been using it. I think my first system, like, we got a computer fairly late. Um, I think my first home computer was Vista. Yeah, I, I'd used earlier. My, like, my school had earlier than that, but my first home computer was Vista. And I obviously got used to finding things in the control panel. And, you know, I knew where everything was, every little setting that I wanted to get to. And it's very much the same with, like, KDE users, where if you've been using KDE for 10 years, you have a... Actually, KDE 5 for 10 years, considering how long that one was around for. Mm. <laughs> you have a very good understanding of where everything is. But there is something to be said about that fairly simplified approach. Where it, yes, it doesn't give you as much power, but it does give you easy access to the things that you're going to want to find. Like, mm. everybody is going to want to do their monitor settings or mouse settings or things like this. And instead of it being like, you know, in the KDE system settings, there's, you know, things like the, the KWIN scripts, and there's an option for, what is it, X11 legacy app support is an mm. option there. It's, it's its own separate screen, so it adds to the whole list of settings that are in there. And and that's great. Like, it, it makes it easy to configure stuff. Or it makes it, uh, I guess, accessible to configure stuff. Mm. But I... It's not for me, but I get why someone would be more attracted to the simple way of doing it. And there's, not, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. There are two very different approaches to do it, and I think depending on what you're trying to get from your system, they're both completely valid ways of designing a desktop. Mm, mm. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to think about this. Like, like there, there's KD Plasma GNOME have two very different approaches in this, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting because there is no not really a, a right way to do it. Because if there was a right way, then we wouldn't have different directions. <laughs> sure. And it, I guess it, it depends on just what the average person really wants and expects from the systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are many who who customize even even Windows to it to a certain extent, which is interesting because you can do it with external tools and whatnot, or even with internal tools with the power toys or what it's called. Well, even just like a a, a system like Auto Hotkey, there is there are people that have these wild Auto Hotkey mm -hmm. scripts to automate massive parts of their system, and that's not something you generally associate with Windows. But if you if you dig into that more power user approach, like, there is tooling there. Obviously, there are things that are locked down, like, you're not getting rid of that desktop. The desktop that uh -huh. is Windows can be modified to an extent, but you're not fundamentally changing DWM.exe to anything else. It's gonna be that. And there are other core parts of the system that can't be touched either. But I'm always surprised by what can be done on Windows if you are willing to just dive deep into whatever that system has going on. Mm. And this is like something that I really like on KD Plasma because you you have most of the stuff there. Mm -hmm. You just need to find it. Whereas on GNOME, you basically have to first enable it if it's there. Mm -hmm. If it's not there, then yeah, good luck. So I just say technically you can compile some stuff or you just do it with some different settings like it, they are usually there in some config file in, in the kernel mm -hmm. or whatever file. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on like running plugins with your desktops? Do you actually use any plugins? Do you use these desktops in a fairly vanilla way? Like what's what's your general approach? Mm, I usually keep them as minimalist as minimalistic as possible. Mm -hmm. But the reason for that is not necessarily because I don't want to use plugins, mm -hmm. but because of the YouTube videos, I like to I like for people to see something that looks as close as possible to the native experience, mm -hmm. so that they don't install it and it looks completely different. And they are right. like, but, "But how did you do this? How you did that?" And that that's sort of the reason. Mm -hmm. Currently on KDE Plasma, I basically just have one theme installed, 
uh, that changes the colors. And that's it. Like I don't use any Kwin scripts. I don't use any icon themes. It's basically a bare bones experience, which is what I like to show others, uh, even though there are things that I would like to improve very much. Mm -hmm. What about the, um, I, I'm assuming the same can be said for the GNOME side then. What about like, yeah. I, so besides like the plugins that are just pre-installed, if you did something on Ubuntu, for example, you would just, that, that's, if, if you did an Ubuntu video, obviously you would have the big list of Ubuntu plugins you have installed, but the focus there wouldn't be GNOME in a sense. It would be more like what Ubuntu is doing with GNOME. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I mean, Ubuntu is technically already just GNOME with a lot of custom plugins. And for me, it's, it's like its own thing. Like GNOME and Ubuntu is not really GNOME for me in the sense that I would like to experience it, even though it's a bit similar. So what I usually do for a native default install is just throw some aesthetics in there, you know, like blur the shell and add tray icons. And for the most part, that's already it. Mm -hmm. Some people like, of course, having a, a taskbar, a dock or whatever, that's pure personal preference. And I wish that that was actually an integrated way mm -hmm. because I don't see why they couldn't hide it or in, even if they want to keep their clean desktop. It, um, it's essentially a bare bones experience and I like keeping it that way. Like on Ubuntu, I don't really think people have to modify much there because I think you can change the way how the sidebar or whatever it's called is displayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's almost a... I, I, don't, I don't like calling it a modified or, or better version because it's essentially just a different experience, a different right. approach. Yeah, it's it's in a sense similar to like what Pop West was doing with GNOME, where mm. it really like yes, GNOME is there at its core, but they even called it something different. They called it Cosmic, and now they're working on their actual Cosmic environment, which is very much inspired by what they were previously doing. Even they didn't re like yes at its core and you could install additional GNOME plugins, mm. but that's not what they were intending for that experience. Yeah. So what is your general go-to distro then if you're using a fairly clean uh, desktop? Uh it depends on if there are any new releases. So generally speaking, if, if a new desktop environment or something releases, then I typically have Fedora installed. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I usually am on Debian. Last time I wasn't Debian stable because it wasn't that old. Currently, I would go to a, a testing branch as soon as 6 or, or 46 releases. Mm -hmm. How old is yeah, the latest Debian just... release right now? How, old, how late are we in the cycle? Uh, okay, so 12. I don't know the when did 12 hmm. come out? I think it was last June or, or May or something. It's not um, that old. That's, that Yeah, that sounds right. Debian 12 release date. June 2023. So not old in Debian it's terms, but still, you know, still, still a little old. Newest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was GNOME 43 or something. <laughs> No, it wasn't 44. It was GNOME 43, definitely, which mm -hmm. had some problems, especially mm -hmm. like file picker icons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And I but the KD Plasma fixed. was. <laughs> I always forget that one took so long to get <laughs> fixed. 